Welcome to DXB Today. Tonight we're talking all about literature and the good things the writing community is in Dubai. <laughs> Take a look at what's coming up. We send Khala down to the Emirates Airline Festival of Literature to meet some of the visiting authors and give us the lowdown from the festival grounds. Plus, we're bringing you Lisa joining us in studio with her new single. All right, guys, very excited to be on this particular show because we're talking all things literature. Lane, I understand that you are an author and I actually happen to have one of your books, <laughs> Luam's Balm, which you gifted me many years ago, named after your, your second uh, child. Yes. I've read that book to my daughter, actually. And have you read the book yourself, though? Well, I was the one doing the reading, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I think, yeah, I, like, I think I have. Like this <laughs> yeah, she's too young to read. Wait, you have more than one book now, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So well, I'm um, so proud of you. Thank you very much. I I appreciate. Feel like everybody you. says they want to write a book, but who actually does well, it? Well, 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 that's the thing. You have to have uh, some sort of inspiration, right? Yeah. And having children inspired me to write about my children. And um, and what it is is a series of seven books. So each uh, book is based in a different country. So it's letting children know about the different cultures there are in the world and in Dubai as, as a whole, you know. I so. can't believe I haven't read this yet. What's it called? Just say it. So Luam, Announce, get your, Luam's get your moment. Balm. <laughs> Okay. So it's about a mag magical balm uh, that comes from the Shia tree, which is growing in the back of their garden, the, the two super siblings garden. And they go through time exploring the world, helping and healing people with this special balm. Well, this is overdue, but congratulations, Lane. Oh, Lynn. shukran, have you? And uh, you know, I've always <laughs> wanted to write a, a children's book also about our multicultural upbringing and so forth and what lessons we learned along the way. Ash, if you had to write a book, what would it be about? Listen, okay, <laughs> I listen to true crime and murder podcasts to relax, so I need to listen to something really disturbing to calm my nerves. So if I was to write a book, there's going to be a lot of murder, a lot of bloodshed, treason and scandal. Like they could make a Netflix show out of it. Like Although that's the sort of book Lane I and I know what we'd want you to write. <laughs> yeah, uh, I want to write, I, I want to know about you and your your life that would be Gosh. the best I'm because we sure know the how world is ready <laughs> honest she would be i think i'd be crying from laughter <laughs> oh well i God. did do you know what i did watch uh, gone girl have you seen yeah. that why gone did girl. you talk about my biography and jump to gone girl just out of curiosity <laughs> because because it related to to the kind of things that you like yeah. When it comes to okay. thrillers and I'm sure stuff it's like got that. nothing to do. It's unrelated to when, if and when I do write my own biography. <laughs> okay. But if I anyone's like seen Gone it, Girl that is, is our cue to move <laughs> on. Yeah. Okay, so we could talk about this all day long, but we have so many interesting guests who are going to add to this on the show. So let's find out who our guest co-host is. Hi, I'm Sarah Hamden. I'm an author and editor, and I'm so excited to be the co-host of today's show. See you in the studio later. Looking forward to it. Sarah will join us a little bit later, but first, the Emirates Airline Festival of Literature kicked off this week. Let's take a look at what's been buzzing down at the festival grounds. Hey, I'm here at Emirates Airlines Festival of Literature, where stories happen. Today, I get to meet extraordinary people who change the game of literature, especially we're focusing on AI, tech, future technologies, and as well, stories. But as well, we get to meet a very important person, the First Lady of Iceland. I'm here with Rebecca Yaros, who's a world-selling author, and as well with over 15 novels. It's a pleasure having you here today. Thank you for having me. First question I would love to ask is, how did your journey all start? Sure, I started writing, um, I, gosh, I was 29 when I graduated college, so I started writing at 30. Um, my husband was gone and I spent a page a night. So I wrote a page a night for a year and when he came home, I had an entire book finished. Will one of your books might be on the big screen or TV? So Fourth Wing has been um, optioned by Outlier Society and Amazon Studios. So we're looking at a TV series. Okay. I just had two meetings on it last week. They're okay. all wonderful and they're very protective of the okay. project. It's really exciting. It sounds very exciting. And uh, what advice could you give to any upcoming writer? I would say just get your book written, try, find the time. There's so much time we have that we don't realize it. So every second you think about writing, sit down and write it. Again, a page a night is what got me to my very first book and they can do it too. Well, that sounds very exciting. It's a pleasure having you here with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm here with Tony Fidel, who is a best-selling author who has worn many hats you might know him from different industries of Nest and Apple. 
It's a pleasure having you here with us today. And uh, please tell us, how did you start your journey? Well, thanks, Kong. Great to be here. Um, I started my journey, well, I started way, way back. I don't know where we want to go, but I started back when I was a kid. Um, I started building things and tearing things apart when I was four or five years old with my grandfather. And then the computer f finally showed up. So I started doing computing in 1979, 1980. Um, but most, most of my stuff has been from my time when I went to Silicon Valley in 1990s. And I went to work for a company called General Magic. And we were creating the iPhone 15 years too early. And that was a huge failure. But then ultimately, I got to do the iPod at Apple and then the iPhone at Apple. Uh, and then my own company, Nest, which was then sold to, uh, to Google in uh, 2016. And now becoming an author, what advice do you like giving to people? To be honest, the reason why I wrote the book was because people ask for my advice all the time. Mm. And so I was really tired of hearing myself saying the same stories over and over to people. So I put them all in this book. Mm -hmm. But really the reason for the book is to honor my mentors. The only reason I'm here sitting here talking to this audience, sitting here talking to you, is because my mentors helped me to get to where I am today. They helped me with all kinds of knowledge, all kinds of connections, things of that nature. And so I wanted to give this book back and honor them. And because most of them had died. So I wrote this book in honor of them. As they help me, I want to help the next generation of builders to create the world around us. And what advice could you give to anybody starting off? Don't be afraid to fail. Over 10 years of failure before I got success and success. And then when I went to start my own company after I had successes, people were like, you're crazy, you're going to fail. We had success there because we had learned and I had learned. So I've had many, many years of failure, but lots of years of success over my 40 year career. Well, perfect. Thank you so much for having you here today. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, get to read this book and the next book. Great. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you. I'm here with Eliza Reed, who wears many hats <laughs> from being the First Lady of Iceland, as well author, advocate and writer. Pleasure having you here with us. Thank you for the invitation. Tell us about your adventures from Canada to Iceland. <laughs> Well, you probably don't have enough time for all of that, but in a nutshell, you're right. I grew up on a farm just outside of Ottawa, the capital of Canada, with sheep and chickens and all of this. And then I eventually found myself in graduate school in England, where I kind of contrived or almost cheated in a competition to win a date with my mm -hmm. now husband, who mm -hmm. is from Iceland. We moved to Iceland 20 years ago, and in 2016, he ran for office for the first time in his life and became elected president of wow. Iceland. And then I became the country's first lady. So it's been quite an adventure, but it's an incredible honor and incredible privilege. Well, it sounds like a fantastic journey. <laughs> now, of course, everything's about literature. Tell us about your first novel that will be coming out. Yes, my first novel that will be coming out is a murder mystery. It's coming out in just about a year from now. It's called Death of a Diplomat, mm. and it is set in Iceland, of course. Mm. Uh, it's all about the wife of the Canadian ambassador to Iceland. Well, uh, I can't wait to have you back in Dubai. We can talk to you again with your next book. It's a pleasure having you here with us today. Thank and, you so uh, much. I'll see you again. Thank you for the invitation. Thank, Thank you. you. I had a fabulous day today talking to magnificent people who are changing the game. We can't wait to see what will happen in the future, especially in literature. Now, our co-host today is a storyteller, editor, exploring the themes of cultural identity and expression through her work. Having recently closed a major two-book deal with American publishers Holt with her debut novel, What Will People Think? Please welcome Sarah Hamdan to the show. Woo! Thank you so much for having me. So Sarah, tell me about how it came together with this major two-book deal. Honestly, this is such a pinch me moment to even be here talking about it because it's been a long journey. It's been 10 years in the making of rejections, of having kids, job losses, COVID, pandemic, all of this leading to these two manuscripts getting snapped up in a two book deal after a major auction in the US. It's the biggest book deal in the region, but it's also a major for any American writer. And I just couldn't be more proud to see my baby finally coming out in the world next February, hopefully. 
and there have been so many people along the way that have helped me, and I'm just very, very excited to be here. Congratulations. I, oh, serious Thank congratulations, you. and I'm glad amazing. you mentioned Thank how you. difficult it was, yeah. because I think yeah. it's so easy for us to see what people produce and their major accomplishments and, and be envious of that and not actually consider 10 years, an entire decade, focusing on this one project and accomplishment. Now, I think my question for you is actually about the story, because as soon as I read what it was about, I automatically felt connected to it. Tell us about it and how it all came about, your idea. Thank you. It's called What Will People Think? And it's about a Palestinian American who lives in New York. She's 25 and she does stand-up comedy in the evenings. She kind of moonlights and nobody knows that she does these shows in the evening. She's very quiet during the day. She has a crush on her boss at work. <laughs> and then she finds her grandmother's diary that dates back to Yaffa, Palestine in 1947. And it's an illicit love affair with a soldier. It's, uh, I've never had a story growing up that I saw in books or in TV that had a Arab female protagonist that was strong and funny and warm and an Arabic story that didn't have to do with politics or religion. So that felt relatable like that. I mean, I'm yeah. so appreciative of yeah. you. I think I'm going to be the first one to pick Thank up the book. Thank you so much. So Thank am I, you. to be honest. I'm really intrigued by your piece. I want to ask you a little bit more about the journey. I mean, we all know world-renowned author J.K. Rowling. It's very public, the struggles she's had. She's been turned down by 12 publishers for several years before she finally was able to publish her piece. And obviously, you know, we all love Harry Potter. Um, so I want to ask you a little bit more about your novel because two novels, 10 years, you faced several ups and downs, you've taken a lot of rejection. As someone who doesn't take rejection very well, how did you handle <laughs> this? <laughs> well, it's, you know, that phrase overnight success, that's a lifetime in the making. It really is that. And I think I needed to work through and get better at writing and figure out my own voice. I've had a career in publish, in, in editing and in writing. I wrote for the New York Times, for Google, but I didn't know how to write for myself. So I went through all of these hurdles to figure out the right story to tell, got a bunch of rejections. J.K. Rowling had 13, I had at least double that. <laughs> but it's really nice to hear my name in line with hers. I hope that the universe manifests and this book becomes a success, but really, I think I just got to the point where it wasn't even about getting published. I just really wanted to put the story out and the writing was pure because my intention was just to tell a really, really strong story rather than get that publishing deal and make it commercially successful. Mm -hmm. And I think I had to go through that journey to get there. So is, is there any relation to a, a true story? This is like, like is, is there any relation there as well? Like the grandmother and all Are the you of secretly <laughs> a comedian and we don't know about it? <laughs> is what I want to know. <laughs> Um, I think all art is personal. Like imagine a Taylor Swift song that's not about heartbreak. You know, the best stuff comes from our own experience. This is all totally fictionalized, but the emotion is 100% real. And, and for it feels me, feels so much more authentic and real, doesn't it? I feel it like does. you can always tell. Yeah. yeah. And for me, I used to be terrified of public speaking, like sweaty palms and heart bracing and all of that. So. My husband made me do a stand-up comedy course when we first got married and it was six weeks and it was every Saturday and I had to just get over myself and get up on stage and do this thing. And that's how my character Mia was born. Wow. Yeah. I want to ask you, that's were amazing. there any sort of social issues that you faced? Because I mean, sorry, I'm quoting JK Rowling once again. Yeah, but you're clearly <laughs> she, a fan. You yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah, that, I, I love her. I'm not, I don't really read Harry Potter, but I'm a fan of hers. I love a good success story. Another thing she mentioned was that her publishers suggested that she changes her name so that it, mm. you know, the person, the readers cannot tell her gender just because they thought that young boys are less likely to read a book if they see a, a woman's name on the cover. Have you faced any prejudice because uh, of being a female author? and an Arab also. Yeah. I was prepared for it, but none whatsoever. If anything, it's the other way around. I learned that in fiction, 20%, no, something like 90% of people who buy fiction are women. So my audience is there, already built in in the story. And I think, um, like my character, I am an Arab female who's made her way in editing and it actually reflects nicely with my character. So Fantastic. if anything, it's the other way around. This is a moment of empowerment rather than any hurdles so far but the book's not out yet so let's see but I think this couldn't have arrived at a better time and you know if you don't try you'll never be able to know right and yeah. that's why I want to ask you about your Netflix short story um, how you got into that what made you get involved I was getting a bunch of rejections on manuscript number one mm -hmm. and it was the middle of the pandemic I had left my job you know those moments in life where you're like I have no idea what I'm doing with myself 
and then I saw a competition on Netflix's Twitter handle asking for a one-page short story with a, back, with a character that has the same background as wherever you come from. I'm Palestinian-American. So I opened my drawer and I had a story that I had written 10 years before that when I was in grad school and I was in New York and it was one page long. So I just typed it up and I sent I mean, it. That's a sign. Six <laughs> months later, in the middle of the pandemic, I get an email, you're a finalist, come to London for the awards ceremony. I get this Ramil Ali dress, I'm all ready. And it, it's the thing that launched everything else because after that came the fellowship from the Lit Fest, my agents, a bunch of agents fighting over this, the book auction, and that's just, that and was the first start. What a confidence start. boost too, well done. <laughs> a much a needed double one. major, congratulations, <laughs> Thank you. that is so fantastic. Sarah, we're so excited to see uh, all the different distance that this book is going to go. Please stick around, we have so much more to speak to you about, and uh, one thing I've learned from you is how to take rejection well. I take <laughs> it very well, I have a lot of gray hair, you wouldn't know. <laughs> Right, coming up, we are learning how to publish our first novel and don't forget about the music, so stick with us.